It's great to be with you again. It's Peter Barlas here, cardiologist. Now, following along the lines of our new stent series where we go through in detail uh, some aspects relevant to these stent devices, and as we've talked about previously, these stents are a, a metal spring that acts to open an artery. They have no doubt a proven benefit particularly in the setting of somebody having an acute blockage or a heart attack, they are life-saving. But again, they can also help when symptoms such as angina or pain in the chest that happens when we exert ourselves. Well, when that's happening, these stents can improve these symptoms. We know, however, that stents are not without their problems. And stents being a foreign material, typically a metal, can cause complications and can trigger problems within the artery that may need more treatments, more procedures, and obviously increased risk of complications. One particular complication is one called stent fracture. Now when you ask, well, what is stent fracture and what is, has a fracture got to do with a stent? So a fracture that we normally associate with, say, a broken bone. While exactly similar features can develop inside the artery once the stent is placed. Now a stent is made of a metal and the arteries are continuously beating at an average of 70 times per minute with the cardiac contraction to ensure that blood is being delivered to the important parts of the heart muscle. Well, these arteries are not simple tubes or cylinders. They are rather complex. They have got various geometries. They're like individual fingerprints that we all have that are very unique. These arteries are also very unique with various bends, various branches. And again, these movements or these individual parts of the artery and geometries become a site where if a stent is placed with time and repetitive motion of the artery the metal of the stent can break can crack becomes fatigued so again we see it in engineering in building design in bridges where things go wrong where Fatigue builds up within the metal and that can lead to failure of the metal. Well, that can happen with coronary stents. It is uncommon, but again, many series of studies have been done to try to look at you know, how often does this happen. And it's, it's tricky because sometimes it's not causing any particular symptoms and it doesn't become clinically apparent. But there have been instances where some studies have shown you know, up to 15 to 20% of uh, stents can have some form of a fracture or fatigue build up inside and with repetitive motion of the artery these stents can fracture can then cause re-narrowing or thrombosis where the, and the clot builds up rather suddenly causing more symptoms and that often triggers a cascade of other events and more procedures more medications and more risk and in that situation we really want to avoid putting any more stents in because the same problem will normally occur now when does it happen well if there are multiple stents that's a high chance when the stents are overlapping and when you've got metal inside metal well you can see the layers of metal become quite thick and that thick bit of metal is more prone to breaking and fracturing now here is some illustration of some of the research that I'm involved with where we specifically look inside these stents to learn about how they behave within the body once they've been placed and it uses a very high resolution camera called optical coherence tomography or OCT but the resolution that it gives us and the advances that we have now in our imaging are amazing to show exactly these cases where the stents over time due to the repetitive motion of the artery can fatigue and can break causing more complications so again 
here's a, a, a very nice illustration of where this has happened and we can see when we do a 3D reconstruction how apparent the bit of fracture in the stent is. So again, stent fracture, something to be aware of. It's mostly procedure related. The first generation type stents were more frequent in terms of culprits for causing this. And these were usually stents that were quite thick in character. The incidence has reduced with modern day stents, so that's really pleasing news. And most often we can minimize as proceduralists, as interventionalists, to know exactly what are the possible triggers and to look at reducing this when we are implanting our stents in our patients. So hopefully you found that useful. Until the next video, bye for now.